conserving systems. OK, so I had told that uh, whenever we are looking for such systems uh, like a better efficient scheduling system or better um, way of scheduling your jobs um, in a queue, whether it is in the input queue or it is in the output queue. Currently we are looking at input queuing. So uh, what are the goals that you are scheduling um, algorithm try to fulfill? OK, so the first thing was work conservation. Then we had come up with 100%. The goal should be 100% throughput. You may or may not get it, but uh, the goal should be like, you know, you want to get 100% throughput. Then um, your, you know, whatever uh, jobs are getting served, that should be, you know, that cannot be beyond the capacity of your system. So that is a constraint that you have. Then uh, your delay is bounded for packets and some other metrics. If you want, you can have. OK, so that was the performance goals. Now, what is a work conserving system? So when I had talked about work conserving system, I told that I will give you a little more idea in the next class. So work conserving system is a kind of a system or in case of a scheduler, you can talk about it like work conserving scheduler will be that kind of a scheduler which will not allow the resources to stay idle at any point of time. That means it will try to make 100% usage of the resources. OK, so that means if resource is available, then your work conserving system will try to use use that resource. OK, so in a non work conserving system, the resources can stay idle, but in a work conserving system, it tries its best so that the resource does not stay idle. OK, so this is what uh, work conserving system means. All right. So now let us start the class. Now. Uh, let us talk about virtual output queuing switch and the scheduling technique that we are going to use there. OK, so uh, when we had talked yesterday about, you know, what is happening in VOQ, let us go to that slide. Yes, so what was happening at each input port? There are virtual buffers for different output ports and requests can come for a particular output port from different input ports. Right, so that means if there are packets at each one of these virtual output queues, I hope that you can see my mouse. So if not, let me know. So I uh, so basically each of these virtual um, output queues at these input ports, it may happen that these all of these have some packets. So that means all of these packets are destined to some or the other output ports. All right. So that means what's happening from each input port. You can have requests to different output ports. OK, and what is the scheduler's task? The scheduler's task is to find out the best way. To connect the input port to the output port or a virtual output queue of a particular input port to the to a corresponding output port so that you have minimum contention. OK, so this is the objective. So now if you basically look at this graphically, it would look like a bipartite graph. That means you have a set of inputs, you have a set of outputs and you are trying to make a match out of it. OK, so the best match would give you the optimal result. OK, so um, that's why it has been said that the VOQ switch scheduling can be represented by a bipartite graph. So where here uh, we are representing the left hand side set as the input ports and the right hand side set as the set of output ports. OK, and the edges between these nodes can be the requests for packet transmission between the input port and the output port. So you can see because we have virtual output queues at the input ports. You are having more than one requests from each input port. OK, like this from A, you have like three links that are going towards a particular output port. 
OK, so one is going to one, another is going to two, another is going to three like that. OK, so this is how you can look at it as a bipartite graph and then uh, we can, you know, ensure that how to find out the best matching out of it. So uh, how can you find out the best match? So we can consider this as a maximum size bipartite matching problem. OK, so uh, what is the intuition behind this that you want to maximize the instantaneous throughput? That means at each point of time you want to maximize the throughput of this system. OK, that is your intuition. Now how the request graph looks like. So this is your request graph where you have um, requests being made from each of the input ports to different output ports. OK, so you can have more than one requests going from an input port to different output ports. OK, now out of this you want to find the maximum size match. And you will get the best match uh, out of that like uh, as it has been given here. That means you have uh, a matching from a particular input port to a particular output port such that your instantaneous throughput is actually maximized. OK, so this is. What we can consider this problem as. All right. So you can also represent this uh, entire problem as a network flow. OK, so um, I'm sure you are aware of this kind of a problem. OK, you have done it in your algorithms course, so you can consider the source and sync as here. You can connect them and in between there is a connection between the, these two set of nodes. OK, so this bipartite problem, uh, the maximum um, size bipartite matching problem that we have seen in the previous slide that can also be considered as a network flow problem. OK, we have seen right in um, in our algorithms course. Uh, this could be considered as a max flow. We have done max flow or mean flow, right? So um, depending upon what is your objective, you can consider this as perhaps as a max flow problem. OK, so um, sorry. Yeah, so you can either consider it as a bipartite matching pro maximum size bipartite matching problem or you can consider it as a network flow problem. Uh, with capacities and flows of size one. OK, so now um, what is the complexity for network flow problems? OK, so in general it is possible to find a solution by considering at most V dot E paths. OK, uh, how can you do that? You can do this by picking up shortest augmenting path first. OK. Now um, you can have further variations on this. That means you can just uh, pick most augmenting path first or uh, you know you can have many other variations like just pick the shortest augmenting path first and keep going on like that. Also you can do this. OK, so um, why did why did anybody come up with such a network flow problem? Because the complexity of this algorithm is less than that of the um, bipartite matching problem. OK, now you can also <coughs> represent this problem of matching the inputs to the outputs uh, as a Ford for I mean using Ford Fulkerson method. OK, so that maybe you can just uh, think about it, how the Ford Fulkerson method will work out in this kind of a scenario where you are trying to match the best input to the best output port. OK. So see, that is what I want you guys to look at. This is one. Um, this is something that we have to look at when we are looking when we are doing some research. OK, there are. Why are you taught about algorithms in your courses? Why are you taught about uh, networks? So in networks, you know the concepts that OK, yes, these are the concepts. This is what happens in networks. OK, but when you need to you know solve some problems or uh, when you need to find a theoretical um, solution to a particular issue that is happening in your real life so first you need to find a theoretical solution and then you go for the realistic method by adding all of the um, errors or gaps or 
accuracy levels or even some other issues, challenges that you can put or that you have missed in your um, perhaps in your theoretical uh, solution. Now, um, when it comes to finding a solution to a particular problem, that is why you are taught these basic subjects of your computer science, like algorithms, data structures, etc. OK, so those are basically the pillars of computer science. Once you understand those, you can actually map whatever you have read in those uh, subjects into what you are going to read in your future subjects. So like here, OK, it was a simple um, scenario that you have to match an input to a particular output. OK, but if you want to solve it okay, when it comes for a larger case or a scenario where you have a large number of nodes, you want to code it properly. OK, so you want to have a lower complexity algorithm. OK, so. You can see that what kind of algorithm does it match to what have you read in your um, in your courses by now? So you found out that OK, it looks like a bipartite matching graph. Then you saw that, OK, it looks like a flow problem. So like that, you can match uh, whatever you have read into real life issues. OK, so then you can um, further find the solutions, find the complexity. And then if it doesn't, then you can again see that what kind of problem does it look like? Does it look like an NP complete problem? Does it look like an NP hard problem? So like that, you have to find out solutions to several problems that come into your real lives. OK. All right, let me get back to the course. So all right, what's the complexity of maximum matching problems? So it is so there are several algorithms, matching algorithms that have been proposed by different researchers. So the algorithm that was proposed by Dinick that had a max um, complexity of O of n power 5 by 2. And um, by Kuhn, when uh, the maximum weight matching problem, uh, the algorithm that was uh, that was proposed by Kuhn that had a complexity of O of n cube log n. Now the problem with this kind of matching problem is that that it is hard to implement in hardware. OK, you are trying to match these uh, if, if it becomes this complex and you are trying to match a large amount of inputs where uh, if you have n is very large, that means you have input and output ports to be very large and at each input port you have to maintain a VOQ. And from there you have different requests going to different output ports at the same time. It becomes pretty hard to implement in hardware and makes your system much slower. OK, so these are the issues that you have with maximum matchings. Now. Um, suppose you have a maximum size bipartite match and you want to maximize the instantaneous throughput, then for a uniform traffic. This is what we have seen that it will be there will be a request graph and with the maximum size match you will get a bipartite match. So your expected arrivals that you will get at the input ports should be less than infinity. OK, similar to so this is a condition similar to what you had seen in your in, in our queuing theory. We had a stability condition, right? That is lambda less than mu. OK. That means your switch utilization, that is sorry, your server utilization should be less than one. OK, so similarly here too, if you want to stabilize the system, your average um, arrivals to your different virtual output queues, that should be less than infinite. OK, now uh, here we have, here it has been done some way of, you know, maximum weight man matching so that, you know, um, you have a better throughput. So first is that you can put some weights and the weight could be the length of the queue or edge or the age of the packet. OK, so what can we do if we are doing maximum weight matching? We have to put weights on the edges. So either you can consider the weight as the length of the queue. That means the you are choosing that virtual output queues packets at which more number of packets are waiting. OK, or 
you simply consider that you know what is the age of the packet which is at the head of the queue what is what do you, what do we mean by age of the packet that means how long it has been waiting okay so every packet will have a lifetime of its own or time to live okay every packet will have a time to live or lifetime uh, of its own so uh, which one is going to finish its time to live faster you can choose that one for uh, or you can select that one for transmission okay so that is why you can consider the age of the packet as a weight okay now um, our objective is that it should achieve 100% throughput under all traffic patterns so <clears throat> how can we represent our objective function uh, we can represent it as argmax of ltn dot sn okay sn will be like this entire switch systems what is the weight matching that you are trying to do all right so this is your maximum weight matching problem that you can write as now with voq architecture how do we work okay so when we are looking at the maximum matching problem in a voq architecture then how does it work so this is the scenario that happens in general okay if we uh, look at the voq architecture also so there can be requests from different input ports to different output ports at the same time right because there are many virtual uh, queues that can uh, have packet arrivals at the input ports so for example here at port number 2 you have um, packets that have arrived for output port number 1 as well as output port number 3 okay, so there are requests accordingly so now from here you want to find a maximum size matching that gives you the maximum throughput okay so how can you match what seems to be best so just this is a very small um, scenario so you can simply see that if you can match 1 to 1 if you can match 2 to 3 3 to 2 and 4 to 4 okay then it will become a, a good maximum size matching um, for your system all right now if i am putting some weight over these edges okay so a uh, weight can be dependent upon like you know as we just saw either the age of the packet or the length of the queue okay so now suppose uh, depending upon uh, one of these values you are putting weights over these edges okay so there is a weight of 2 from uh, between the edge from 1 to 1 there is a weight of 1 uh, from 2 to 1 weight of 6 from 2 to 3 8 from 3 to 1 1 from 3 to 2 3 from 4 to 2 and 4 from 4 to 4 okay so what is our objective maximum weight matching right so we have to find out edges to give us the maximum throughput so that means the maximum weight should come out so now um, what is the one that is not having any contention which output port so this is number 4 is not having any contention number 3 is not having any contention and they are having large weights also so you choose 4 to 4 and 2 to 3 okay they have weights 4 and 6 respectively okay now let us come to 2 and 1 okay so number 2 has two um uh, options either 3 to 2 with weight 1 or 4 to 3 with weight 3 but 4 already you have selected that is from 4 to 4 okay with weight 4 so 4 is gone so you only have one um, option that is 3 to 2 with weight 1 but now we have to also check what that is for each of these input ports the weight that you are the edge that you are selecting should be having maximum weight right So now let us check at three. At three, you are sending two different um, um, requests. One with edge weight of eight and another with edge weight of one. Your objective is to have maximum weight matching. So therefore, you will always choose the one which is having maximum weight. So you choose this one that is three to one with edge weight eight, and that is what you have chosen. Okay. Now so. 2 3 and 4 they have 
been able to give out or uh, have been able to get a matching okay with maximum weight what happens for one one had only one request to be sent from one to one that was also having a low weight and one is already uh, output port one has already been taken up by input port three so therefore one does not get a chance to transmit its data at this iteration okay so this is uh, your max maximum weight matching problem so you may not get 100 percent utilization at each point of time but you are trying to get or uh, the those matchings which will help you to get maximum throughput at each time instance okay so this is how your maximum matching in vue queue architecture works This I think this we have already done. I will not repeat this slide again. Just a second. So what have we known for maximal matching? So a maximal matching is a matching in which each edge is added one at a time and it is not later removed from the matching. OK, that's what we have known for maximum matching that means there no more no augmenting paths will be allowed and um, and no input and output are left unnecessarily idle okay these are the features of maximal matching that we have seen now what are the example let us see one example of maximum matching so you try you have different requests from a particular node to different output ports like our basic problem that we were looking for now for maximum matching what was the feature first is that that no augmenting paths are allowed okay and edge each edge is added one at a time and is not later removed from the matching and no input and output are left unnecessarily idle so now look at the maximum matching here it is basically satisfying all the features which are, have been told in the previous slide for maximum size matching problem. OK. Now, uh, why do we use maximum matchings? In general, it seems to be a little uh, easier to implement uh, and it is also considered to be having lower running time complexity. OK, so that is why we generally use maximum matching problem uh, or generally represent such systems as a maximum matching. Now, um, mm -hmm. a maximum size matching is at least half the size of a maximum size matching. OK, and um, it is. Uh, yeah, it is repeating this thing. OK. OK, so now what we will look we have looked into VOQ in terms of maximum size matching. That means we took the effort of looking at, you know, what let us put weights and then find out the maximum weight and then go for the maximum weight matching. Now what we have seen, seen that maximal weight, uh, I mean a maximal matching problem that is having lower complexity and has this work conserving property with it like no input or output will be simply given up as ideal, simply sit as ideal. Okay, that is very important feature for maximal matching problem. So if we try to use this maximum size matching in that case, you will get a better um, or an efficient system, more efficient system. So for that reason, some different algorithms were proposed with this maximal size matching algorithm in the backdrop so that your this concept of VOQ that we are using now this scheduling this becomes much more efficient. OK, so um, one of the uh, one such scheduling is known as parallel iterated matching or PIM. OK, so this is uh, so we are going to start PIM with this slide. These are the features that PIM has. OK, so PIM is among the very first practical schedulers which were proposed for VOQ architectures. Now it is based on having arbiters at the inputs and outputs. That means it is based on having schedulers both at the inputs as well as at the outputs. OK, 
So there are two schedulers which are going to work and uh, they are going to ensure that you know you have a best matching between the input and the output uh, output ports. Hmm. Now um, what does this PIM do or how does it work? It keeps iterating. Okay? It keeps iterating the steps which are there for PIM until there are no more requests that can be accepted or all the requests are basically handled. OK, or if at all uh, you can consider it as like for a certain given number of iterations, it will work. So let us see what are the steps. So first is the request. That means each unmatched input sends a request to every in output port for which it has a queued cell. OK, so this is your request. <coughs> So this is your request that has been made. Now what has to be done that the output output port has to grant the requests. OK, so uh, what does it do? So the, so the, here the scheduler at the output port uh, takes care, right? So grant the outputs. That is the second step. If an unmatched output receives any request, it grants one by randomly selecting a request uniformly over all requests. So we will see how this works out. That means if at all there are a set of requests that are going for output port number one. OK, so suppose output port number one is getting requests from input port number two, three, four like that. So what will it do? What will the scheduler do? The scheduler will randomly choose a request out of two, three and four. And then it will grant that request to the particular output port that is output port number one. So maybe if the random scheduler selects, if the scheduler selects randomly three, then input port three, uh, input port three's request will be granted. That means input port three can connect to output port one. Okay. So this is the grant output step. Then the third one is the accept inputs. Okay. Now what will happen if an unmatched input receives a grant? It accepts one by selecting an output randomly among those granted to this input. Now what's happening if there is like I'm giving I gave you the example right that two, three and four are the requests from input ports um, that an output one is getting. So output port one got requests from two, three and four and it randomly selected or granted uh, the input port three. OK, so similarly there can be many requests that are made by input port three. The input port three perhaps has made requests to output port one, two, three, four, five like that. OK, and because it is being chosen randomly, this input port three can be selected by several other output ports like output port one has selected three. Output port three has selected three. Output port five has also selected three randomly. OK, that means in the grant output step, uh, output port three was granted by three different output ports. That is output port one, output port three and output port four. So now what will input port three do? It will in the step three, it will select any one of these output ports randomly. OK, for accepting or it will grant or it will accept the grant of the output ports randomly. So now what will input port three do? It has to select randomly out of output port one, three and four that which one will it actually select for transmission. OK, so this is also done randomly here. So let us check that you know how the implementation of parallel maximum matching algorithm happens. Now, so this is what the system looks like. You have some different state. I mean, this is basically the state of input queues. You have arrivals happening at your different um, input ports. All right. Now, you have uh, virtual output queues at each of the input ports. 
which will ensure that depending upon the arrivals that uh, of packets in your system, it will ensure that there are different requests that are being made to different output ports. So for that reason, you can have such kind of a circuitry in between. You can have, as I told you, that there will be uh, schedulers both at the input uh, port side as well as the output port side. So these are the arbiters. Now what have we seen? That the second step is grant arbiter, uh, the granting the sorry, granting the output port request. So the output ports will randomly choose a particular input port and grant their request. So you have a grant arbiter which works here and once the grant part is done in the second step, in the third step, uh, the input ports will select randomly as to which output ports request it will actually serve. Alright, so uh, sorry. that is the request arbiter here. Alright, so you have a decision register here at the output ports. Now, let us see that uh, this is another way to look at your, uh, you know, how the parallel maximum matching algorithm works or how it is implemented. So you have a new request here. You have the request buffer. You have a grant arbiter and you have an accept arbiter. OK, so once this is done, then you get the decision. That means the last final decision as to where the connection actually is going to go between the input and the output port. OK, so these are at each point of time. This is working. OK, so if you look at this, you have um, a request buffer. That means your um, requests are basically arriving. Then you grant with the grant arbit with the help of the output of the grant arbiter. You uh, fulfill the second step that is grant the request of the. Uh, grant the requests by the output ports then. Once that is done, then the acceptance of requests happens by the input ports. Then finally the decision comes out. That means where the um, connection will be done between the input and the output port. OK. And this is done until all the requests are not finished. OK, so this is uh, one of the uh, another way of implementing the parallel maximum matching uh, matching algorithm. Now we need to see that how it actually works. OK, a lot of theory has been done by now, so let us see how step by step PIM works out. So let us look at the first iteration. OK, so step one is request. So there is a request from 1 to 1. There is a request from 2 to 1, 2 to 3, 3 to 1, 3 to 2, and 4 to 2, 4 to 4. These are the request sets that you are getting. OK, so now what is the second step? The second step is that you, the output port grants the requests. OK, so what are the options that output port 1 has? Output port one has options of um, three options. It is getting requests from our, uh, input port one, input port two, and input port three. So it can randomly select out of these three input ports. That is which one it would um, grant the request to. So randomly, output port one selects input port two, or it grants the request of input port two randomly. All right, now let us look at output port 2. Output port 2 has two choices, input port 3 and input port 4. It has to randomly select one. So randomly, output port 2 chooses input port 4. OK, that means it grants the request of input port 4 randomly. All right, now um, let us look at output port 3. Output port 3 does not have any other choice except 2. So it grants the request to two. Similarly, output port four also does not have any any other choice except input port four. So it chooses input port four. This is step two. OK, step two is grant. Now let's get to the next step. What is the third step? That is 
you have to accept the request. Who has to accept? The input port has to accept the request. OK, that means input port has to accept that it has been granted. Probably many of its requests have been granted. So out of those granted requests, which one does it want to send at this iteration or at this point of time? So what does it do? So first, so number one does not have any choice. Nobody selected it. Number three does not have any choice. Nobody selected it. OK, so what it does, let us look at number two. OK, so number two will have to do a random selection because two, uh, uh, two uh, uh, output ports granted its requests, one and three. OK, so randomly it chooses output port one. All right, now um, next comes input port four. Input port 4 got a choice between 2 and 4, so it randomly selected or randomly chose output port 4. OK, so the decision that has now been made, that is 2 will get connected to 1 and 4 will get connected to 4. But the problem is there are still requests waiting at 1 and 3. You have requests, right? 1 and 3. and you have to still go on or you cannot leave them idle. That's what our feature for maximal matching was there. OK, so you have to still go on for the next iteration to find out that where which matching will suit best for these two ports. OK, for now you have found out that OK, these are the best ones for two and four. Now let's get to the second iteration. OK. So second iteration, what do you know? Let us look at the previous one. Node one, this is not, uh, sort, sorry, not node one, input port one. Input port one had made only one request to output port one, right? It had made no other requests, but at the end of this first iteration, what did we find out? That this output port one is now taken by node two, uh, sorry, input port two, okay? So even though input port one does have a request, it cannot send this request or it cannot have its request being accepted by output port one because previous iteration you have seen that this becomes as the best matching as of now. That is two to one. All right. So one cannot send a request in the next uh, iteration. But what was uh, the other one that was left? That is three was left and three had request uh, to uh, output port one and to output port two. OK, so similarly output port one is done now. It is already been taken. So this is the request that comes out. That is three to two. OK, so yes, output port one, it does not have any choice. For, sorry, output port two does not have any choice apart from three. So it selects um, or grants the request of three. And three also does not have to make any further choices uh, among the grants that had, that it has got because it has got only one grant from node. Uh, so from output port two. So in step three, it accepts that. And now you have this that is two to one, three to two and four to four. OK. So uh, what happened now? You did have four requests being made. Let me get to this one. You did have four requests. Uh, I mean four input ports from which you had different requests made. OK, but at the end when you are trying you try using PIM with different iterations, you found out that. You are not getting the maximum. Um, uh, you know throughput that you would want to have. OK. But still what you are trying to do is you are trying your best to. Avoid the amount of contention that you are having and also to reduce the complexity that was happening when it came to maximum uh, weight matching algorithms. OK, so. Um, this is the problem that we have with maximum size matching algorithms. But let us see what is its prop performance and properties. So it is a fair algorithm. 
OK, because it uses a fair method to serve the inputs, serve the uh, input ports. All right. Now, if we have uniform traffic, then it can have 100% throughput in certain cases, not always. Now, it converges in log and iterations to a maximal size matching, so your complexity is lower. Uh, it has a very poor performance, about 63% throughput with one iteration because uh, of its in inability to desynchronize the output pointers. OK, so that is why we are basically doing more iterations until you can give maximum uh, or you can fulfill the maximum requests from the uh, different input ports to the different output ports. OK, now the next part that comes, which is the most important part, is that that it is very difficult to build schedulers or arbiters which select the nodes randomly via hardware. OK, so that is the uh, one of the biggest problems that we face when we try to use PIM OK in hardware. OK, now the best iterative maximal size matching algorithm takes O of n square log n in serial or O log n in parallel time steps. OK, so if, if you do it parallelly, you will get O of n log n. Uh, uh, oh, sorry, of login complexity. Now, if the number of iterations is constant, as there was in one of the features, we are told that either it will work until all the requests are done, or for a constant number of iterations, it will work. So, uh, in that case, what you have to do that it you have to implement in constant time. So, however, the hardware design, of course, will be pretty complex in such cases because of all the issues that we are having here. That means you have you cannot. I mean, random arbiter is very difficult to build and you will have higher complexity if you are working it in serial wise. OK, and still you may not get uh, 100% throughput. So uh, in order to get a better performance improvement over PIM, Another matching algorithm was proposed and that was known as the round robin matching algorithm or RRM. OK, so round robin matching is easy to implement. We know it, it will of course have some round robin way of selecting, right? So uh, this uh, how does it work? We will see, but let us first see the features. So it is easier to implement than PIM in terms of designing the IO arbiters. So schedulers work becomes easier when we use round robin matching and the pointers of the arbiters move in a straightforward way. You do not have to select randomly and all that. You know that this one, this after this and this, the sequence is known. Now again, we have to follow some steps until no more requests can be accepted or if you are working uh, the algorithm for a, uh, for a particular amount of iterations, then also um, it will run until up to those iterations. So what are the steps? First is request. That means each input sends a request to every output for which it has a queued cell. OK, so that means if it has a packet for an output port, then it will send a request. Now uh, in the grant phase, what happens that if any output receives any request, it chooses the one that appears next in a fixed round robin schedule starting from highest priority element. So your system basically knows that this is the highest priority element and the arbiter will know that which sequence come after which one. OK, so the output port will choose the one which appears in sequence. OK, next in sequence. Now, uh, once this is done, the output notifies each input whether or not its request was granted. Then the pointer GI to the highest priority element of the round robin uh, schedule is incremented by modulo N to one location beyond the. So this is not coming no beyond the granted input. OK, so let us see how it works. I don't know why it is not working. It is not showing. Yeah, if no request is received, the pointer stays unchanged. But here it is not showing. No? Oh, this last one is not showing here. Yes. 
so then uh, anyways so the output port will grant the um, um, request of the corresponding input port depending upon the round robin schedule and uh, the pointer that is so the pointer gi here uh, will be incremented once the um, you know once it is uh, uh, granted or once it grants the request it will be incremented then in the accept phase if an input receives a grant in accepts that one uh, that appears next in a fixed round robin schedule uh, and then the we consider the accept pointer as the ai and uh, the pointer ai to the highest priority element of the round robin schedule is incremented to one location beyond the accepted output okay if no grant is received the pointer stays unchanged so how does it work so first is you have the requests so this is from 0 to 3 0 to 0 you have one request 1 to 0 1 to 2 2 to 0 1 and 3 and 3 to 1 and 3 these are the requests that you are having now you have to check for the grant phase okay how do i check so i start my pointer from 0 Okay, my grant pointer at each output port from 0 assuming that 0 is having the highest priority here so 0 1 2 3 like that okay so 0 will accept uh, first that is 0 is having a request from 0 1 and 2 so it accepts 0 or sorry grants 0 then uh, similarly when you go ahead uh, next what you get you get for three okay let us look at three this is an example in uh, yeah so now um, here let me first start the three so in three you have requests that you have got from two and three okay so what you do you select two here okay now similarly for one one you have requests coming from input port two and input port three so uh, as per the schedule, uh, I mean pointer, you select input port 2. For 2, you have request only from 1 and 1 is also there uh, free. So uh, you grant requests to 1. Okay, so now similarly, you have got granted requests to different uh, input ports. And now the incrementation of the um, pointers will also happen. So here the pointer is now incremented to 1 and this pointer is incremented to 3. Now similarly in the accept phase, again pointer will start at 0 and you can simply now select depending upon what is the request that you are getting from a uh, grants that you have got from. So node 2 has got uh, grants from 1 and 3. So it will choose 1 as per the round robin schedule and the other two will choose um, like input port 1 chooses output port 2 and input port 0 chooses output port 0. Okay, so like that in the accept phase, you have accepted and then the pointer will be incremented at each input port. This is how your uh, RRM works. Okay, so I will not get ahead with this performance analysis of RRM. So I hope that you have understand, uh, you have understood this uh, round robin matching algorithm. Please go through this one once more in the um, at your home and you will get several. Uh, you know, this is uh, this has been taken from, you know, some different blogs and I found out from different uh, books also. So it is an amalgamation of different PPTs. OK, so maybe you will not get.